Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the supercharger network, so if you're interested, stay tuned. We all know that the supercharger network is literally like a moat for Tesla right now and it allows you to travel basically anywhere in the country and makes it super convenient to you know do road trips in your Tesla and even into Canada now it makes it more convenient to do road trips up there as well. And they do charge pretty quick, hence the name supercharger. Uh, they, char they can charge to 90% in about 45 minutes, obviously it depends where you are in your charge um, and that's pretty quick for a BEV. There are a couple different types of stations with varying power, so I thought I'd go over them and what they mean for you. When we talk about battery operated vehicles, we're always going to be talking about electricity or the energy that's needed to power these vehicles. So terms like kilowatt and kilowatt hour will come into play, and I do have a specific video on what the differences are between those two, so I'll link you in the cards here. Right now, in the supercharger network, there's three different types of stations. There's urban, V2, and V3. So we'll start with urban, which is the easiest to recognize because the box that houses the plug looks totally different from the V2 and the V3. The urban chargers are the slowest in Tesla's network, and those clock in at 72 kilowatts of power. So these are great if you're maybe half SOC state of charge or higher, or maybe you just want to get a quick top off. That's where urban chargers do come into play, and they are very handy in that sense. As your SOC gets higher, the amount of power that can go into the batteries at once decreases, and that's one of the features of the BMS, the battery management system of Tesla. That way it can protect the batteries from degradation. So basically that's why I mentioned that urban chargers are good for, you know, if you have half battery or you just want to get a quick top off. Another note I want to mention is that with urban chargers, you don't have to share the power. So I'll go into that a little bit in detail a little bit later. That being said, at an urban charger, you can park next to another Tesla if you want. But the general rule of thumb is to park at least one space over that we can avoid door dings and things like that and it's just there's more space for everyone. And so the reason I say at urban superchargers that you can park next to somebody if you want is because the cabinet that powers the two stalls is 150 kilowatts. So if we take 72 times 2, that's under, that's under 150 kilowatts. So they can both share and be fully powered at the same time. Tesla created a very simple system to understand which stalls are powered by which cabinets, and that's basically when you look at the stalls, it's going to be 1A and 1B that are powered by the same cabinet. Or in my example, it's 4A and 4B. Now there is a asterisk urban supercharger, which is basically a temporary mobile charger. So these shots are from my friend Tesla Joy, and so basically down in SoCal particularly, um, this, this is at Culver City, which is a particularly very busy station all the time, so they will deploy the uh, temporary mobile chargers to that station to try and relieve pressure from all the, from the other superchargers that are over there. And so these ones are basically at 125 kilowatts of power, even though the, you know, the uh, stalls look like urban chargers, they're kind of in between urban chargers and V2s with the power that they provide. So if we take a look at the V2 superchargers now, you'll notice that the housing looks different. And so these are going to be either V2 or V3 superchargers. The housing looks the same on both. There are a couple ways to tell if it's a V2 or V3 supercharger station, if for whatever reason you don't have access to your screen where it tells you. The first way is to look at the letters just like at the urban stalls. They will have the A and B format as well. Another way to check is the plug cable thickness. So on the V2s, the plug cable is really thick, and that's because it's not liquid cooled, it's air cooled. So I'm assuming it's really thick because that's for safety reasons. As I mentioned earlier, the space parking, you know, leaving the space in between cars does play a part at the V2s because these ones do share power. So the white cabinets at the V2 are also 150 kilowatt power, but the V2 stations are rated at 150 kilowatt power. So two stalls times 150 is going to be 300 kilowatts of power, meaning that the one cabinet can't power, can't fully power each stall all at once. So what that means for you is basically if you are the first person to plug into the A or B stall, you're going to get whatever power you need for your particular charge, depending on your SOC and where you are in your SOC. Then if another person pulls in next to you on the other, you know, on the other stall, A or B, they're going to get the leftovers of the cabinet based on whatever you're charging at. So that's where the sharing, you know, does come into play and try and park, you know, at least one space apart from the next person if you can. 
So what happens is the power sharing will be like this until the first person leaves. So once the first person that plugged into the A and B cabinet leaves, then the other person will get the full power of whatever they need based on their SOC at that time, essentially becoming the number one car. At Tesla's newest supercharging stations, the V3, the stalls do look the same as the V2s, but there are ways to tell them apart. First is the power. So the V3s clock in at 250 kilowatts of power, which is really quick for supercharging. And on top of that, the numbering system is now a little bit different. So instead of A and B, it's now A, B, C, and D that power, that one cabinet powers for the V3s. Another very important change that Tesla made for the V3s is that one cabinet on the V2s, like I mentioned, is 150 kilowatts of power, while on the V3s, one cabinet is 1,000 kilowatts of power, or one megawatt. So if we do some quick math, 1,000 kilowatts of power divided by 4 is 250 kilowatts. So that means that every stall can go full power and there's no sharing like of the V2s. And I'm sure they did this because the, since there are a lot of V2s around, I'm sure people are complaining that they couldn't charge at the full power of the supercharger station because many of them are very busy and that means that two people have to share the cabinets. And so I'm sure Tesla made this change because of that. One other way you can tell it's a V3 is the plug cable thickness is quite a bit thinner than the V2s and that's because it's liquid cooled. So they, you know, have new technology now, and so basically they use that technology to make the cable, the plug cables thinner. So those are pretty much the ways you can tell the different versions, if it's V2, V3, or Urban, unless there's like a sign. So down at Kettleman City, there actually are signs on each supercharger telling you if it's a 250 kilowatt or 150 kilowatt. But for that particular station, it's probably because they have both, because it's such a big supercharged station. There are a couple other stations that do have signs, but not you know, not many of them. So these are the ways you can tell uh, if you don't have any signs and for whatever reason you can't access your screen. Another note I want to mention is your variant and the supercharger speed. So depending on your variant, you might not be able to utilize the full power of the V3 superchargers. So I'm basically talking to the SR Plus owners and the Lemur owners, limited edition mid-range uh, Model 3 owners like me, we can't use the full power of the V3 supercharger stations. And that's because the battery packs are a little bit smaller in our cars compared to the long range. So the 2021 SR Plus has a 55 kilowatt hour battery pack, and my old uh, mid-range has a 62 kilowatt hour battery pack. So if we take the 2021 long range all-wheel drive, that variant has an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack. So the reason why the you know smaller smaller battery packs like the SR Plus and the mid-range can't handle as much power is because there's more surface area in the long range all wheel drive for that heat to dissipate and spread out to. And that's why, you know, our smaller uh, battery packs can't handle as much power because it's going to end up degrading the batteries if, if they do allow the full power of the V3 supercharger station in our smaller battery packs. So if you have an SR Plus, the max power you can charge at is 170 kilowatts which is a little bit better than the V2, so you can still utilize V3, but it's only going to be just a little bit. And for mid-range owners like me, we can do 200 kilowatts of power for the V3. So that's better, and it does increase your speed a little bit, but you still can't utilize the full power of the V3 like I mentioned. Keep in mind, if you want to hit the full power of the supercharger station, you need to be around 10% SOC for that to be able to happen. And this is why I mentioned that urban superchargers are good if you have like half SOC or higher because you're not going to utilize that full power of any of the stations anyways to protect the batteries from degradation. And even with that long range variant, you're not going to hit the 250 kilowatts of power for very long even if you are really low in your SOC because that's just not how the batteries are, you know, made to handle this power. Uh, you know, as you get higher in your SOC, the energy, the power amount goes down. That way it protects the batteries from degradation. So what facts did you find most interesting about the video? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.